Hello ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between. It is Spain Homes and we are back in the beautiful city of Elche, also known as Elt in Valencian. This beautiful historical and cultural city has been vibrant and been settled in for the last 2,500 years. Here in this square, Plaza de Beit, this is a square that has been around since between the 8th and the 13th century. Originally known as the Al Andalus community, it was inhabited for markets, for public and social gatherings back in the day, and is still a vibrant place for the community to come and frequent now. So, without further ado, everybody, shall we get the tour started? Let's go! Santa Maria is here, right in the centre of the city of Elche. This beautiful architectural monument is actually built on top of one of the first Christian churches on the remains of an old temple, Muslim temple. What you find is it's actually remnants of the 17th and 18th century with its Baroque architecture on the outside and its very splendid and impressive bell tower on the inside. Visitors and tourists alike can go up and have a look at the splendid views of the city of Elche from the bell tower. But I think what's more distinct and interesting about this church is the fact that it gathers and has and hosts every year on the 14th and the 15th of August an amazing event which is known as the Mystery of Elche. And in Old Spanish people come and congregate and sing the chorus songs known centuries old right here every year. Now that's something I would definitely stop by to check out as well. I was talking a little bit before about the Basilica of Santa Maria, which you can just see behind me. And it, obviously this was a building that had been reformed over many, many centuries. And so what actually was it was before isn't automatically what it is now. But if you look at it originally, it was laid in the form of a cross where you would have the central nave and it would be surrounded by the four chapels. Very interesting as a backdrop, can you imagine, for the beautiful Elche mystery plays that they would have here every year. But what's interesting about this spot is it also has historical buildings that are near to it, that are connected in its history and also in its form. And so if you span around here, this would be the entrance to the Altamira Palace, which between the 15th and the 19th century was occupied by the Lords of Elche. And then also, as I'm sweeping around over to this side, you can also see this is the Mehe. This is the archaeological and historical museum here in Elche. It takes you all the way back. And also, back in 2006, was where they had exhibited the Dama of Elche herself. El Palmeral de Elche is one of the largest groves in Europe. This is a beautiful park that is located in the centre of the city that goes back to the Moorish period, back in the 8th to the 13th century. It comprises of over 200,000 palm trees that were grown here during this period. These groves have provided beautiful places for the tourists and locals to enjoy shaded areas and see not just the agriculture, but also the history of Elche. Mostly, the palm trees are of the date variety, and it also feeds into the authentic history of the irrigation system that was put in place back in Elche around this time. After all, we are in a semi-arid part of the region, and so the irrigation system 
was sophisticated before its time and was able to supply water to this array of amazing palms. Right across Elche, you will see huge throws of history and significance within the agricultural choices that residents make with their own gardens and their own homes, representational of these beautiful big palms. As you come to walk around the streets and look around the squares and the various parts of this city, you'll find that Elche has beautiful, renowned, natural, green spaces for people to enjoy relaxing and being outdoors. Not to mention, outside of the Palmeiro del Ete, which is part of the UNESCO Natural Heritage Site, there are a array of beautiful gardens, horticultural gardens and green spaces where you can see the integrative history of these beautiful palm trees. Don't forget, after all, the palm trees are not only a great note to the history of Elche, but every single year, every person that lives and is from this beautiful city actually celebrates a well-standing tradition where they make palm bouquets for Palm Sunday. So if you ever find yourself in this locality around that time of year, do come and have a look at the beautiful creations that they are able to create every year with these palms. As you walk around and wander through the streets of the old town of Elche, you will find various historical monuments that give you a good indication as to the history of this city. Right here is Los Baños Arabes, which were the Arab baths. Built around the 12th century, these baths were actually, the remains of them are underneath the St. Lucia convent. And so therefore, at the moment, I can't take you inside because it's closed. But what I can say to you is that what's wonderful about the old town is you can come across very many museums to actually find out more about the rich culture and the history of Elche. You have the Ethnological Museum, the Museum of Architecture, the Museum of Archaeology and History, all within walking distance of the various streets and squares of the old town. Elche's history spans back 2,500 years, starting in 5th century BC with just a small settlement of Iberians during the Roman Empire. This went on to then have Arab occupation in the 8th to the 13th century, in which there was an incredible amount of development and growth and an extensive and elaborate irrigation system installed. Then further on into the 13th century, around the Christians and the Reconquista, you found that it changed again with the Christians and also with other settlements emerging here in Elche. And so over the course of time, it has spanned lots of changes, lots of growth, interesting civilizations of people that have not only settled here, but remained here. And a place that used to be basically occupied by veterans of the Cantabrian Wars, well, it is a very, very different place today. Not only historical and interesting in all aspects, but also rich and thriving with history that still buzzles today. So what you can find if you come to Elche is that it is one of the shoe capitals of Spain. If you like your shoes, especially the alpargatas or espadrilles, then this would be the city in which you would come to find it. Walking across this bridge overlooking the Vinalopo River, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about property. So, Elche has rising popularity 
and this year it is obviously something that we have come to notice with market movement. The prices of property here has increased by 10.9% as of January 2024. You will also find that the suburbs in the outskirts of the city are becoming more and more popular. Areas such as Val Verde, Azalbares are becoming more sought after areas. You can get a variety of different kinds of property here in El Tse, from studio apartments that are older to more modern and more adventurous apartments, right through to villas, townhouses and even country estates. The price point is variable as in Alicante province per square metre for a property it is 2,177 euros but in LC at the moment it is 1,272 euros. Not to be ignored I don't think especially when you think about the possible options of living and accommodation in and around the city. Less than 20 kilometers southeast of El Tse, you will find a beautiful residential town called Santa Paula, which offers 12 kilometers of beautiful coastline to enjoy. This is a popular spot for many who want to enjoy the coastline, the beach and the Mediterranean Sea in this particular locality of the region. You will find in Santa Paula, there are a variety of beaches you can also choose from. This one, for example, is Playa de Levante, but there are next to it others as well, all offering various different kinds of enjoyable experiences outdoors. But what's wonderful about the beaches you'll find here in El Tse is they are special in offering great water sport activities like windsurfing, paddle boarding and kite surfing. They are family friendly beaches with great amenities on site and an array of restaurants and cafes to enjoy and eat all the while. Here at the port of Santa Paula, you can see that we are in front of these ferries. For a small fee, you can get a ticket during the day and take a boat trip, hire it, go out and visit the beautiful island and explore. This particular island is known for it being a very small inhabited island with beautiful eco-marine life surrounding it and interesting houses and residential areas on the island to explore. Outside of that though, Elche has a wealth of transportation hubs and systems. It is sophisticated for its infrastructure. Here we are in Santa Paula, which is approximately 18 kilometers away from Elche city center. But if you wanted to go to another beachy area, you also have Los Arenales del Sol, which is also just under 20 kilometers away. If you're thinking that you're wanting your friends and your family to come over and visit, or you like to, like we do, travel around, then you will find that the airport is approximately 16 kilometers away, which is Alicante Edse Airport. You also find that Valencia's airport is 180 kilometers away and Murcia's airport is 80 kilometers away. Now, when it comes to towns and things to do, you're probably wondering, what is close to Elche? Well, Alicante city itself is just a 20 minute drive away. You will also find that close by, within 37 kilometers, you have Oriella town and you also have a variety of other beautiful towns that are also offering distinct flavor here in the Costa Blanca. So I would say a town that offers, well, 
lots of other towns to explore, a place that has, well, train stations, bus stations and airports. What more could you want in terms of transport?